What's up guys? Today we're gonna be doing uh, the ending of Fantastic Beasts the Crimes of Grindelwald Explained, which is gonna be just kind of going through a handful of the things that happened in Fantastic Beasts. Um, if you want to see my overall review, which has non-spoilers in the beginning and then spoilers at the end, feel free to watch that first. But now let's get into what happens at the end. So in my actual review, I talk about how there's a lot of inconsistencies in this that seem like they have to be blatant lies because we as viewers of the Harry Potter series know that things can't be true. So basically, let's pick this up from the moment where everything starts going really bad. The moment where Grindelwald's trap comes together, where they manage to get everybody into this like Lestrange tomb, which opens up into this amphitheater where Grindelwald is having his rally to, to try to convince new followers to, to join him. So they manage to get everybody in this place, and I mean everybody. You've got Jacob there, you've got Newt there, you've got Lita, a bunch of Aurors, this random dude who I can't remember who is Lita's half-brother. And this is where everything starts to really hit the wall. So the whole movie was just a convoluted mess, honestly. Up until this point, the movie was just kind of a mess. But this is when it gets down to things aren't exactly adding up. So just to give you a gist of what's going on, other than all the stuff going on with Grindelwald, there's an entire side plot of who's Credence actually? And it's very annoying because it's all these little whispers where there's like suddenly out of nowhere, out of literally nothing, Credence is now mir miraculously a the missing Lestrange child. The missing Lestrange child that was somehow, for some reason, sent to America. That this dude, who is Lita's half brother, who has like a with his father to kill the the last remaining Lestrange male, so the bloodline can't be continued. And they do this they do this huge thing where they explain this this background story about how Lita's dad is like super effed up and uses charms to force people to sleep with him because he's super messed up, very rapey. Very rapey. So that's how Lita's born, and then there's a, a little boy that's born. Little, little boy that's born, and then they're both sent to America. And that's where they believe that he landed, and that's where they believe that, that Credence stayed. Now there's, I don't even remember if there's a specific reason as to why they said that Credence was left at an orphanage in America, but then Lita wasn't left. Like, obviously she was older, but like, I don't understand what happened there or why it happened or why they just left him to his own, like, I actually don't understand what happened there or why it happened. You know, I'm sure they explain it, but there's literally just so much information going on in that movie that I just don't remember. So this dude's about to kill Credence or at least try to kill Credence. And he's like, I don't care. I just want to know who I am before I die because that's the edgy attitude of today's teens, even if it's 1927, so it's fine. But then right as he's about to be like, this one, this is Corvus Lestrange. Lita's like, Corvus is dead. And then she gets to do her bit of telling, not showing, where we get this weird, huge flashback running where she switches the babies because, you know, Corvus never stops screaming so that, and then that baby ends up on a boat that submerges, so that baby's dead. And that's why she thinks she's a bad person, but that doesn't really tie into why it's established in this movie that she's a bad person when Queenie's asking Newt about her and Queenie's like, she's a taker, you're a giver, and that family's not supposed to be very nice. Like, why is there this legend that the Lestrange family is not very nice if there's so few of them left that this was the last remaining person that could continue on the bloodline? I don't get it. I honestly, at this point, feel like I need to see the movie again, even though I don't necessarily want to because there's just so much jumbled information and none of it makes sense. So yeah, we get there and it's like, oh crap, so Credence wasn't actually a Lestrange at all. So now it's like, who is he actually? And that's, I don't care. Did Credence need to be somebody? Can't Credence just be a nobody? And I swear that's probably what's gonna end up happening in the next one. He probably is just a nobody, but that gets us to the very end. So, you know, Grindelwald does his whole trap thing, makes it look like the Aurors are worse people than he is. You know, he convinces Credence to come with him because Credence is just so desperate to know his origin story that he leaves, even though Nagini's like, he doesn't actually know you, he's just telling you what you want to hear. He goes anyways. So Grindelwald cares about Credence because he knows Credence is the only person he can send to attack Dumbledore that has a chance of beating Dumbledore because there's this like weird blood pact the two things have. So there's a blood pact thing between Gr Grindelwald and Dumbledore that prevents the two from attacking each other. You know, Grindelwald has it the entire time and he's not willing to destroy it because he knows that Dumbledore probably has a really great chance of, of kicking his ass. So that's why he's getting Credence on his side or trying to get Credence on his side so he can release this Obscurial on Dumbledore, knowing that Dumbledore would probably not want 
to hurt him for a variety of reasons. Uh, I honestly think that the reason why his sister died was potentially because she was an obscurial. That might not be the case, but that's a theory that's going on that I'm willing to believe. So there's a chance that he could be very sympathetic to that. Not to mention that Dumbledore does not want to attack people that he sees as innocents. He tries to see the best in people. So I could understand why he would be, you know, sending Credence after him would probably be a really good idea. Even if Credence might not have a chance of beating Dumbledore, he would have the best chance of beating Dumbledore. But luckily the Niffler managed to grab that little blood pack during the, the final scuffles of the movie, so now Dumbledore has it, so that's how like they explained that now Dumbledore, he can destroy it and go attack Grindelwald. And you know, that's what we, eventually that's what we're gonna get because we all know, you know, according to, to wizarding history, Dumbledore kills Grindelwald. He defeats Grindelwald. That's when we know what happens. But either way, that's the supreme interest with Credence. And then we get to the end of the movie and Grindelwald lays down the biggest piece of BS in a movie ever. He tells Credence that he's a Dumbledore. He's Aurelius Dumbledore, a missing Dumbledore, which I swear to God, we would have to know if there was a missing Dumbledore. So I swear this has to be a lie. And even if it's a lie, it's still annoying. It's an annoying direction to go in because again, I don't care. There are so many more interesting ways you can go with this series than trying to build up Credence as some kind of like missing Dumbledore relative or even focusing on Credence this much to begin with. It's annoying, it's stupid, I don't care. If you wanna focus that much on Credence, Credence needs to be like the focal point of the story. It, it, not, not Newt, and I don't want that because Newt's fantastic. So how does he reveal that he's a Dumbledore? So earlier on in the movie, Dumbledore arbitrarily says this thing that's like, you know, there's like a, there's a, you know, a legend in the Dumbledore family that, you know, a phoenix will always return and be loyal to a Dumbledore. My such and such relative died, his phoenix flew away. We never saw it again. So throughout this movie, or at least at one, I only remember one point where he's like feeding it on top of a box. Like Credence is feeding this little chick thing on top of a box. And then obviously he gets to the end of the movie and he's still got that little bird and, and Grindelwald starts telling him like, you know, like, you know, your, fa your family's the one of the ones who's gonna try to kill you, like one of your your last remaining relatives basically is gonna try to kill you. And there's there's a, a, a legend among your family of a phoenix, you know, being loyal. So this phoenix that has found its way to you and you've had the entire time, you probably didn't even realize it was a phoenix. I'm now just gonna shoot with my wand. It's gonna become the phoenix. And he's like, you are Aurelius Dumbledore. So that's how they tie that in. And I swear it must be BS. There has to be some kind of weird ass storyline where Grindelwald was like, I need to make sure that that thing stays near him so that I can build this weird convoluted story about a legend that probably only Dumbledore should know. So it wouldn't even be that. He could probably have just said, you're Dumbledore, you're a Dumbledore. And that would have filled him with enough rage to maybe try to kill Dumbledore for abandoning him and knowing that he existed and abandoning him. Even though I think that's all BS, I don't think that he's a Dumbledore. It's just, it's so convoluted. And for that to be how the movie ended, I literally almost screamed at the screen. That's right, I almost screamed. Because if, if she's actually, and she being JK Rowling, has actually lost her mind so much that she's gonna make Credence a missing Dumbledore, I'm done, I'm out. This is a dumpster fire. It's not canon, it's the cursed child to me. It doesn't exist. I will not acknowledge it. We had it. We had a nice standalone Fantastic Beasts movie, and that's it. That's all we need to know. They arrest Grindelwald, and then somehow he escapes down the road, and Dumbledore ends up killing him. So that's how, that's all I need to know. If if they keep going down this storyline, which I'm sure they won't. I'm sure it's not actually. I'm I'm positive that Grindelwald was lying to him. But you can't build a mystery that way because that's not a mystery to an audience. The thing that Harry Potter did so well was like you give people watching the little pieces, the clues to build together, and then you get the reveal. This is a bunch of lies because we know that Lita could not have been the last Lestrange and if she dies in this movie, that should have ended the Lestrange family line if Bellatrix marries a Lestrange, like, like I don't even know, like 40, 50 years later. We know it's not possible. So right there, that's not true. On top of that, we know that Dumbledore has a sister, not a brother. Dumbledore had a sister that died and that most people don't know about, not a brother. That's well established. And I honestly think that if there had been another fourth Dumbledore child, we'd all freaking know about it by now. So if for some reason she's not lying about it, and that is a storyline they're gonna go with, I'm done. I am assuming it's a lie just to get him all riled up so that he has a reason to specifically try to attack Dumbledore. But that's the kind of thing that should have been like in the middle of a movie, not the end of the movie, leaving us going forward being like, what was that stupid convoluted shit I just watched? There's no point to the Lita storyline at all, at all. You literally could have removed her, 
her family, that entire character, like everything out of the movie, and the movie would not have suffered for one bit. But unfortunately, there's so many of those points because the movie itself didn't really make much sense as a movie. There's almost like any of those storylines you pretty much could have pulled out at any given moment and it shouldn't have jeopardized the overall purpose of the storyline. So yeah, that's what happened in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. A lot of bullshit that ends with Credence being told he's a Dumbledore. So yeah, that was basically the end of the movie. That's what we waited two years for and now get to wait probably another two years before we get some kind of resolution. I'm hoping the next one's better. This was a disappointment.